We have game two here, which is with Cornucopian Gills as the additional expansion. The board here, it looks like you want to do something with Cursed Village. I don't know if I've spoken about Cursed Village yet, but this is a nice, good game to focus on Cursed Village. So it says, you know, plus one card, plus, not plus one card, plus two actions, and you draw until you have six cards in your hand. So it's a unique village in that regard. And also, when you gain it, you have to gain a hex too. So it makes it, by um, gaining it, a little bit more, you know, awkward. Anyways, so I'm going to look to do something with Cursed Village, Butcher, Soothsayer. Um, Horse Traders is excellent because it discards your, your hand size and then Cursed Village can draw it back up. So I'm looking to get there. Uh, we do open with the goat, uh, the Cursed Gold, of course, and the pouch. So I go for a Tracker and a Puka. The Tracker is quite important. Uh, it reduces your hand size, yes. It also allows you to top deck things, which is perhaps a lot more valuable than, well, not necessarily a lot more, but I think that's more valuable than the um, reduction of hand size. So here I am going to top deck the silver that I gained straight away here to make the most use of it. My opponent opened with the uh, pixie and the puka here. Our pixies are nice and we'll actually focus on P pixie a little bit later on into the match here. Our farming village for my opponent. Uh, it was kind of a okay card. Um, here, a bit unfortunate that I do not have a copper to trash, but I will take the silver trash here just to advance my deck and be able to buy something good, because I'll probably see the cursed gold, and I do see the cursed gold. My first five, well, second five after Puka, is going to be a vampire. Remember, vampire gains and then turns into bat, which then trashes, and they go back and forth. So the gaining of 5 costs here seems to be quite important. So my opponent picks up a vampire here and this is where we're going to focus on the hexes, right? So here I am going to purchase a cursed village. I have the tracker in play. This is why I bought the tracker because now I could top deck the cursed village. I know there's puka in the back as well. So cursed village into puka seems like a nice tempo play to make here. Remember, I have to gain a hex. So now what do you do here when you... Um, get the cursed village. Do you top deck it first or do you get the hex first? Very interesting decision. And you have to know what the hexes do of course. And I turn up this one, Famine, which discarded the cursed village off of the top of the deck for me. Awful. Awful. So it seemed like in that instance, okay, I should have received the hex first, then gone ahead and put the cursed village on top of my deck right seems like that's what I should have done so I bore that in mind and next time I'm gaining cursed villages I will think a little bit more or at least keep this incident in my head anyways so Puka comes alone by itself here because the cursed village was discarded by famine I do pick up a pixie here I only need the one tracker to put things at the top of my deck and pixies are well nice cards uh, the vampire comes out for the second time to gain me a butcher i think it's time for the butcher i think it's time for the butcher to start collecting coin tokens or chopping and changing things soon the puka will be obsolete the goat will be obsolete i can change those into more valuable things so uh, my opponent actually makes me miserable here I, the vampire also hexes, so I take misery, so I'm at negative two points there. That's not so bad in this kind of game where we have more gaining. It's very early in the game here. It's not mid game or end game where the two points really could throw a spanner in the works. And here I did have the option of playing the uh, tracker, I believe, or the puka, and I went for the tracker. Kind of regretted it after seeing this hand. I was looking for the bat really to trash some cards the bat or the goat would have done it you know any of these animals none of them showed up none of them showed up to get any trashing done so a bit lackluster of a turn now, i do pick up our horse traders i feel like that's a bit premature remember i said the horse traders works nicely with the cursed village i play one cursed village horse traders discards uh, two cards so that's three cards out of your hand and then the cursed village can draw up again uh, there are quite a few cards here that, you know, leave your hand and reduce your hand size. Butcher, Suitsayer, Bard does it as well. Tracker, of course. 
uh, horse traders does the most work. But I feel like uh, you want to focus your strategy around the um, Butcher and Soothsayer and then draw back up with the Cursed Village just because of how quickly Butcher can empty the province pile. So not a lot happening on this turn for me here, just going to turn the bat back into a Vampire. Vampire is extraordinarily useful, <laughs> extraordinarily useful, as is this boon here by the Pixie. So this is a nice little boon, uh, my opponent chooses not to go for it, instead to trash with the Puka and he has a Butcher now. He's looking actually quite thin. I have taken, I have played this cursed goal quite liberally. I haven't been paying attention to how liberally he's been playing his. I do know that he trashed it with his butcher, so that also obviously influenced the amount of curses in his deck, getting rid of the curse gainer, that is. But I decided to keep it around. There's two curses left. Felt like, look, man, it could be worth, um, worth the wait if you just keep the curse goal around and you know butcher it a little bit later so i did have the option here of changing it into something else with the butcher but decided to hold on to it curses are soon out and then it'll just be gold it won't be cursed anymore because you can't curse anymore i uh, changed this estate into a pixie here just a general useful card and another cursed village for me I get the uh, I get the last curse here off the plague as well. So now, for sure, the cursed gold is well simply just a gold. Speaking of gold, my opponent has a soothsayer now, and they look extraordinarily well set up for the end game here with one butcher, one soothsayer, and more cursed villages than I do. I feel like uh, the less curses, the amount of curses in my deck really slowed me down and put him in a much more advantage just position here. So he actually chops and changes here for another soothsayer and he has two butchers now, two soothsayers and a bunch of um, cursed villages. Picks up a horse traders there for the plus buy presumably. This is a nice boon out from the tracker here, right? Do not want to see those curses at all. Uh, not really the horse traders either at this point. Can't really make use of it because I don't have enough villages. I need a bit more villages to make use of it. So, I do see the uh, Puka here, which will allow me to draw through a lot of my cards. I do trash the Pixie here to get a couple extra cards out uh, from the um, Boon, of course. I think that's definitely worth it here. And now I have quite a few options because I've drawn so much of my deck. That's also another trash of the Pixie. It's uh, two coins, two buys. I mostly will take that every time over the Pixie. That's the only plus buy Boon. There is. So quite a few options for me here. If you want, you could pause the video and think about what you would do in this position. I wasn't quite sure what to do here. I only have two actions, so it has to be two of these three. I go for the Butcher and the Puka. I do kill the Goat here, I believe. And I turn that into a Cursed Village. Uh, again here, the decision to top deck or to receive the hex first. So remember in my previous bad, uh, bad time, all right, my um, you know negative experience. I chose to take the hex first there, and then the cursed village, which turns out it didn't really matter. Uh, but here, here is where it matters again. This is a different hex now. So I did this time take the hex first. No. I, yeah, and then I put the, um, oh, I top deck the Cursed Village again, and then I took the Hex here. So I didn't, I didn't learn from my um, previous mistake there. So I top decked it, and then the Hex, you know, emptied my deck into my discard for me. Very, very sad. I was very disappointed. Um, this third Hex here um, f allows me actually to top deck something which was a cursed village so at least i managed to get a cursed village on top of the deck somehow but i really mismanaged those hexes there and a lot of it has to do with lack of familiarity with with with, with what each one of those hexes does and you have to obviously pay very close attention and know what all of the hexes are know which ones are coming up to make a better informed a more informed decision on you know what to do in that case of you know do I receive the hex first or do I top deck my cursed village first? Um, if I do gain a cursed village, what kind of hex 
Oh, I expect it. What would be the worst hex for me to receive? How bad would it be? I guess these are the kind of questions you have to ask yourself whenever you're receiving hexes. Or boons for that matter. But here we were focusing on the hexes because, well, we have the cursed villages around. So uh, my opponent was able to gain a couple provinces last in, either through butcher gains or buying it. I was too busy talking about, you know, how to take your hexes here. Anyways, so I do play the uh, Will O' Wisp here before the Cursed Village. I felt like, well, there's very few things it could hit, but it turns out there's a bat, a pouch, a curse, and shouldn't be playing the Will O' Wisp before the Cursed Village in case it increases your hand size. But it works out. I didn't draw anything off of the Will O' Wisp, so that's good. Uh, the Horse Traders comes into play. I get to you know, draw a lot of cards with the Cursed Village there. I did trash my opponent's horse traders with one of my hexes, War. So that's nice. I take away the plus buy from him because I don't believe he has his pouch either. He may have trashed it to his puka. And here, I am just going to purchase a province and trash these two curses, the last two curses out from my deck here with the bat. Uh, it's very nice that it leaves me with a vampire for the next turn. So it gives me some gain in potential. We are a little bit near the end of the game as well both in terms of Butcher emptying the provinces, as well as Cursed Villages at 2 and Pixies at 5. So here, uh, this doesn't work so nicely with the Cursed Village, the Horse Trader's reaction, because it will put an extra card into my hand. Again, like I said, Cursed Village draws up to 6. So that's not the best thing in the world, but it works out still here. My opponent actually does something... Um, a bit unexpected here. So he used his butcher to change a province into a province, the first one, and then he does the same thing here. And changes a gold into a province there. And he's not able to buy any other victory points because he has no money. Because he's changed all of it into provinces. And he leaves me with a very easy pile out here actually. And I was surprised that he let me do this. He was controlling this game for the majority up until the end here, and then he left me with a rather easy pilot. I was surprised. He's a much better player than that I did not expect her to be put in this kind of position. But I will take um, the pilot and the win here, surprisingly. So the two butchers here, I will change our two cursed villages into the last two provinces. And I should have enough money left over with the horse traders to pick up a duchy for the win. I do find the vampire, so it's even easier to gain the duchy. Anyways, so that is game two for you. Cursed villages and hexes. You have to really, really pay attention and know what hex might be coming and what is the worst that could happen to your deck. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.